Hi there, me again, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. <clears throat> so, seeing the Twitters uh, light up about the cost of medical bills in the States. So I did a video in August of last year about the cost of my stroke, and now I've, I'm a year out of a stroke. So let's talk about what my stroke, for the purposes of the bills I had to pay, cost me. Now, I live in Canada. I'm going to be honest, every time you Americans get into an election cycle and one of your potential leaders or politicians or pundits, they start talking about the, I got to talk about the evils of the social medicines. You get it wrong. Um, and then you go, if you went to Canada, you'd be dead. You'd be in a waiting list. Again, you get it wrong. I'm not here to make any comments about the American political landscape. I don't understand Obamacare. I don't understand Medicare, Medicaid, HMOs, co-pays. Um, I, don't, I don't, and I don't need to because I live in Canada. All I know is every time when I leave my country to go to your country, I get supplementary health insurance, um, which basically covers my costs in the States and the potential evacuation back to Canada. So. I had my stroke 10.20 in the morning at work on a Thursday, if memory serves. Luckily, <clears throat> about 32 kilometers down the highway, there is the nearest neurological trauma center to me. Um, so I dropped at work in the middle of a conversation uh, wasn't planning on needing the hospital in any way, shape, kind, or form that day. And I dropped. Uh, completely helpless. Couldn't hold up my own body weight. Could barely have a conversation. Um, so I went to the hospital via ambulance. I got into the emergency room. The first doctor that saw me was a neurologist. And for anyone that's been in the mill, I got the knife hand. You're having a stroke. So I got the knife hand. It was... Probably the scariest sentence you're ever going to get to hear. I had the TPA because I was diagnosed. I'm going to be honest. It was a flurry of activity. I wasn't really looking at my watch. But from what I can remember, I went off the ambulance to pushed up beside a, a, a hall on a, on a stretcher to getting the knife hand to inside the machine that went ping. 10 minutes, there was no wait. So for the Americans, you're going to go, well, if y'all go to a Canadian hospital, they're going to make you wait. No, if it's an emergency situation, there's no wait. Now, I'm going to touch on the, 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 the difficulties of the Canadian system in a second, or more than a second, but surely. I went from the hallway to the machine that went ping. They gave me the first round of tests. I remember, the, remember they had to then scare me and tell me they're going to give me radiation. Um, they did a second round of tests. I got wheeled to an area. They did some more tests. Now, mind you, I have not seen by the emergency attending or anyone else. I've only been seen by a couple of nurses and, and, and um, the neurologist who saved my life. Because my brain was trying to kill me at the time. Because I was having a, a left brain, moderate, ischemic, parietal uh, stroke. So there was a clot in my brain that was trying to shut my brain down. So in essence, I was my brain was trying to kill me. So I then stayed in Emerge for a couple hours. Right Now in that interim, um, one of my friends from work, Dave, who's one of my best friends and an even better asshole because I was a stuttery mess in Emerge and he told me that I'm probably going to need a speaking spell. <laughs> By the way, Dave, still waiting for the speaking spell. Still waiting. Because um, he figured it'd be easier for me to type it out. Now, Dave and I have a very morbid, dark sense of humor. I'm ex-artillery. He's ex-infantry. So that that is what it is. Um, and... That being said, um, I asked Dave to go get me some things because you don't leave your house expecting to need 
the hospitals. So I texted Dave a list, or I gave Dave a list, like, can you get me pajama pants, because I hate hospital pajama pants. Can you get me socks and underwear, because I don't have any. Can you go get me, like, a toothbrush and a charger for my phone and snacks, because if they're going to let me eat, I'm going to want snacks. Um, so I gave Dave my bank card, and he departed. When Dave came back, it was several hours later, and I was in ICU. In that interim time, I was given TPA, the drug that saved my life, the drug that cleared the clot from my brain, and then the next morning, uh, I was sent back down from ICU. They, the determination was going to be around 11 o'clock that morning, 12 o'clock the next morning. They were going to take me from ICU back down to imaging. They were going to do another series of brain scans and determine what level of damage they can find. I then went from there to the stroke step-down unit. I was there for maybe two hours because they determined that due to some of what my heart was doing, uh, they wanted to check on my heart, so they put me in the cardiac renal unit where they put two heart monitors on me, not one, just two, because apparently they thought I was from Gallifrey, like I had a heart here and a heart here because I could have been a Time Lord because I had one. I remember I had a heart monitor on, and a nurse came in and goes, I put a heart monitor. I'm like, well, what is this? In the interim, when I was in ICU, we're going to back up a bit, Dave showed up with a bag of snacks and um, socks, love those socks, and t-shirts and underwear, and he brought me pajamas. Dave, you and I both have the same twisted, morbid, inspired sense of humor. You brought me women's 2X pink plaid pajama pants, and they are literally my favorite article of clothing ever uh, for pajamas we'll get into my new favorite article of clothing shortly so i went from the icu to stroke step down to the cardiac unit and on the cardiac unit they let me go so i spent roughly three days in the hospital at no point was i asked for a credit card at no point was i asked for a check at no point was a credit check done at no point did I have to sign a promissory note. The only thing I had to show them, and it was actually taken from me because I really couldn't do it myself, is they grabbed my wallet, which grabbed my Ontario health card, and they grabbed my driver's license so they knew where I lived. The only thing I had to pay for in the hospital, other than a couple of coffees uh, from the local Tim Hortons coffee shop in, in the cafeteria, was I had to pay like 38 bucks for... Um, TV. I needed TV. Oh, well, sorry. I thought I needed TV. I didn't even use it very much. My brain was too not very focused. So, what did the hospital cost me? I've got some numbers here. So, the pajama bo bottoms, I'm going to assume they're 20 bucks. I never kept the receipt. TV, I believe, was 35. Snack was 30. We're going to say socks and underwear was 30. Um, there was a, a charger for my phone because didn't bring one with me. wasn't expecting to need one. The ambulance ride was forty-five dollars. So there's my hospital stay. My bed was covered. My drugs in the hospital were covered. Everything in the hospital cost me. Get a round up. That's fifty-five, eighty-five. Um. 115, 160. So we're just going to round up for the sake of argument. We're going to say the hospital cost 200 bucks. Right. Well, then you get out of the hospital. I had to go to physiotherapy, and I did physiotherapy from July till I believe October, if not November. Didn't cost me a dime. It was covered. My my physiotherapy was covered by the province of Ontario. And if I wanted to continue physiotherapy on my own accord. Uh, I could do so through the healthcare benefits plan of my of my employer at like 80% cost or 85% cost. So it would be almost like eight bucks a set, eight, eight bucks a, a session kind of thing. Um, I went to occupational therapy. I believe I had three sessions of occupational therapy, maybe four. Again, didn't cost me a dime. Covered by OHIP. Speech and language. Now I had some pretty bad speech deficits, and I mean crippling speech deficits right after my stroke. Luckily, a lot of that returned organically. 
I also have been greased um, and bettered. It's been my distinct privilege and benefit to share my life with my girlfriend because she not only has a master's in English, uh, she was also finishing her master's in counseling psychology at the time. So when it came to doing, she would research things to do for like aphasia. So we would do things to help with my aphasia. She would give me like word finding games, like tell me all the J words, Jezebel, jerk, you know, um, things like that. Um, and, or we do some confrontational naming uh, and, and she was of, of great benefit. So I didn't have a lot of formal speech and language because by the time I got into the later sessions of speech and language, I'd already kind of functioned or aged out from the, the scale that OHIP will cover. I could still do it through my employer, but you know what, whatever's going to come back is going to come back. And I just have to educate the people around me at times about, Hey, I don't talk so well occasionally. And so if things start to happen, please do the following things and please don't do the following things. Um, let's talk drugs. So the majority of my medications that I'm on four of them, uh, are covered by my, which are prescribed by my doctor. Uh, they're covered by my benefits plan through my employer. I have aspirin not covered by any benefits plan. I think that's going to cost me 10 bucks for the year, like 81 milligram baby aspirin, 10 bucks for the year. Now, I, I'm in Canada, so what I'm about to say is Canadian. Um, I'm on medical marijuana. I don't smoke it. I, I have a, a CBD, uh, THC combination oil, and it has drastically improved my quality of life in many aspects. That is not covered by any benefits plan, uh, and that cost me maybe 450 for the, the year. from Well, basically from November of 2018 20, um, to now. So that's cost me 450 bucks. The appointment was free, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, I, we need to wear sunglasses indoors, so not prescription. My girlfriend and I talked about it. Prescription sunglasses, if I lose them, yeah, oops, you're a lot of money. So I just wear contact lenses, uh, and I wear sunglasses. They're 45 bucks. Uh, we've recently discovered those little silicone earbuds, ear, 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 ear plugs. Uh, they can help me with noisy environments. I think it was 25 bucks for a, the amount we've spent already. And I haven't used them all, so we've spent $25 on those. Now, I do need um, musicians' attenuated ear, puds, ear, ear plugs. They're like 400 bucks a shot. Have not spent that money yet because I'm trying to find if the insurance will cover it. They will. They just don't know it yet. Now, I self-referred to counseling. Uh, the insurance company agreed to cover 80% of the counseling sessions. So I'm only out 140 bucks on counseling. Uh, and then my girlfriend and I, we traveled from Ontario to Montreal to Fredericton to Halifax in return. And we needed to get out of province medical insurance. And I think that cost 30 bucks. So if I add all those sums together, uh, it comes to roughly $860. So I'm just going to round up to make it an even number. I'm going to say for a year after my stroke, it cost me $1,000. 1000 bucks Canadian. So $832.45 American or whatever the exchange rate is right now. However, I've been to the hospital since. I've been to other doctors since. So I went to my general practitioner. I said, I have some vision problems. I need you to write a referral note. So OHIP will pay for an eye doctor. OHIP paid for an eye doctor. Didn't cost me a dime. The referral note also didn't cost me a dime. Um, I wanted to start going back to the gym. So I asked my doctor to refer me to a cardiologist because of some of the reported health issues or heart problems that were potential that were noticed in the hospital. Again, the referral didn't cost me a thing. The appointment didn't cost me a thing. The tests that the cardiologist didn't cost me a thing, right? So what's that cost in the States? I don't know. An eye doctor for one appointment and a cardiologist for a cardiac, cardiatric s stress test. Right? I was at the cardiologist for like five hours or four hours. They did things. The neurologist referred me to the medical marijuana clinic. That didn't cost me a dime. So... The neurologist referred me. That didn't cost me a dime. Going to the clinic didn't cost me a dime. 
I've been to the clinic three times now. None of that cost me a dime. Uh, the only thing that's cost me is to deal with my Healthcare Canada licensed provider. Uh, anytime I order from them, I just pay for the product and the shipping. Okay. Uh, so currently, very few healthcare providers will, when I mean healthcare providers, I mean your employer's insurance plan will cover that. So I'm kind of out there. I've been to the hospital, I mean, by emergency, going to say three times that I can definitively remember. There may have been a fourth time. <clears throat> been to the hospital. My girlfriend and I, we have a headache rule. If I have a headache that lasts longer than six hours, I go to eMERGE. If I have a headache that has secondary symptoms, I go to eMERGE. I've been to eMERGE due to these headaches. And as far as I can remember, every situation due to a headache, I've been in eMERGE. They've done brain scans. Well, what's one brain scan cost? Right? Three, four thousand dollars a scan. What's the emergency room? Just the emergency room admit cost. Twelve hundred bucks. I don't know. Right? So there's four times an eMERGE. We'll say four. Uh, each time they did a CT scan or a PET scan. Uh, one time with radiation contrast that I can remember. The rest of the times without. Uh, what's that cost? Right? Um, and in a couple of the times I was given medications uh, for various reasons. Um, one was to relieve the pain. The last time I was there is because I had a wicked sinus headache that lasted for 12 hours. I went to my girlfriend, I'm like, I'm going. And she's like, yes. One time I went to eMERGE because I was confused and stuttery. So we had some significant concerns there. Last time I was in eMERGE was for a mental health issue. Didn't cost me a dime. Uh, because the mental health issue, I've been referred to a psychiatrist. Didn't cost me a dime. I see the psychiatrist tomorrow for the first time. Doesn't cost me a dime. So what does my stroke cost me over the course of the year? Thousand bucks. Thousand Canadian. Right? 831.45 American or whatever the case may be. In the States, you know, your typical emergency room visit can cost $3,000. In the States, one day in the hospital because of an ischemic stroke can be $9,100. In the States, one day in the hospital due to a hemor hemorrhagic stroke can be $15,000. One dose of TPA in the States can be $6,000. Right? TPA, for those of you who don't know, if you've had an ischemic stroke, it, it's the brain drain. It's the, it's the drug that's going to save your life. You know? um, so I don't know what Obamacare is. I don't know what Medicaid is, Medicare, HMOs, co-pays. None of that is in my existence. The Canadian system isn't perfect. Yes, there are waits. If you're not an emergent patient, you're going to wait. Uh, yes, sometimes some of the things you may need may not be covered by your provincial health care plan. Yes, sometimes the drugs you may need may not be covered by either your provincial health care plan uh, or your employer's health care plan. Yes, even getting to a specialist, depending on the issue, can be a wait. Yes, sometimes you're going to encounter doctors that are not knowledgeable. And I've my former general practitioner is one of them. But one thing you're not going to do in Canada, and again, this isn't a slag on anyone in specific, this isn't me trying to throw shade or hate in anyone in specific or try to say one system is better than the other. But the reality is, every time I called my doctor, I didn't worry about where's that money coming from. Every time I went to my doctor and something had to be done, because I've been to my doctor at least once a month since October, at least once a month. I've been to the neurologist since August at least five times, right? Uh, I've been to a cardiologist once. I've been to an eye doctor once. I've been referred to a social worker for an assessment. I've been referred to a psychiatrist for treatment. It, 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 none of these occasions has caused a moment of economic panic. None of these occasions have I worried about having to sign a promissory note 
When I showed up to the hospital, they didn't ask for my credit card. They didn't ask for a credit check. They didn't ask for a promissory note. The only time I had to financially interact with the hospital when I was in the hospital where I was treated for my stroke I was going to the gift shop to get a TV and internet subscription, which I barely didn't even use because my brain couldn't handle it. And I just was just, just too scared, worried, uncluttered, unfocused. So for those of you that live in the States and you have to make some difficult decisions about when do I go to the hospital? How much could this cost me? How much money do I have to have in the bank? You know, for those of you that have been or are being crushed by a maelstrom of medical bills, I, 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 I'm, I'm just going to be honest, I can't relate to that. My entire life, going to the doctor was a phone call. Like, I need a doctor, right? So when you have your next round of election cycles coming up shortly, when your politicians, when your policymakers, when your pundits, when people that either currently are your representatives or want to be your representatives, when they start talking about, well, if this was Canada, show them this video, right? Because my stroke for a year cost me a thousand dollars in the States. Depending on the stroke, if I had my exact same stroke in the States, just the stroke itself, just the hospitalization would have been just just around $60,000 American. The first year of my stroke would have cost me probably, with all the rehab, uh, like physio and occupational and speech and language, uh, that, that in and of itself would have cost me probably another $15,000. So, unfortunately, people are going to try to use um, the healthcare situation in, in any country as, as a turning point, as a talking point dur during an election. But no one should be forced to go homeless or go hungry or be worried about the potentiality of, of bankruptcy just to make sure that they don't die. I'll leave the link in the description below of the video I made a year ago <clears throat> about um, the cost of a stroke. So you can see that video. And for those of you that are either currently going through the recovery from a brain injury, the recovery from a stroke, uh, please like, share, subscribe. You're going to get some, some benefit out of the content that I generate. For those of you that are supporting someone, that are uh, going through the recovery, the rehabilitation, the reintegration, the redevelopment uh, from a stroke or a brain injury, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone that's in either of those situations, please point the channel up to them. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears to me be immediately befuddled, confused, someone who appears to have uh, vision problems, they see at a grayscale, they can't see to one eye, they only see a little dot in the world, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, Someone who has a facial droop, there's a noticeable slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who has um, an inability to raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all. Someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Someone who can't smile equally, effectively, or at all. Someone who has general body weakness or weakness on one side, or has the inability to stand unaided. Please, immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.